those of you who are here in Christ Church. Thank you for all of your prayers, for your support, for your financial giving, and for your compassion in so many ways. We can't do all this work uh, without you, and so really appreciate it. It's great to say thank you for a day like today. Also really great to welcome, I'm sure online, but also here in Christchurch, those here for the first time. And I do like pretty often to remind people, people who we are and why we're here. So who are we? Well, we are Christchurch with St Mary's. That means an Anglican church, part of the Church of England, in the Bristol Diocese, Swindon Deanery. We're also part of the Old Town Partnership of Churches. So we minister with the Barbara Methodist Church, and United Reformed Church, and also the Messy Church, which came on Rashid School. That's who we are. But why are we here? This was something I'd love to hear why you're here today. Let me remind you of half the PCC uh, why we're here. So first of all, we have a clear vision. Our vision is to be Christ Church in the community. We have a mission, and it's a five-fold mission, four fingers and one hand. First of all, by proclaiming Christ through teaching and example. Secondly, by welcoming and serving all through hospitality. Very special this week, members of the congregation were in the Marriott giving gifts to those joined us from Afghanistan to this area. Thirdly, by encouraging people to find God through worship, faith and prayer. Fourthly, by providing a spiritual home, resources for the community. And fifthly, by transforming Swindon and beyond with God's hope and compassion. Quite a lot there, but five key words, proclaiming, welcoming, serving, encouraging, providing, transforming. So we have a vision, we have mission, we have values. Values are really important to us. So we'll do this, God willing, with humility, grace, respect, listening prayerfully to God and to our neighbour. So I hope that encourages you. We're here for a purpose. All we can do is through God's strength. What I will do, those are always on our notice sheet on our website. But we'll provide, perhaps for next week, a piece of paper with that on for you. If you don't receive the notice sheet online, please do let us know so we can give that information to you. We want to have it in a hard copy, we can arrange that as well. Thank you for being here today online and here at Christchurch for your support and your prayers. Please stand. And so you could summarise all of those words. Generous God, generous living. Our Bible verse. This time I will say this Bible verse. You can see it on the screen. To encourage you to have this close by. And again, if you're here for the first time, we've got this on the card for you afterwards. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he's given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Very special on this informal community, but using some words from the Aina community. Thank God for the pilgrimage to Aina all that will see more about that from our friends at refreshments afterwards. These words come from Iona, a gift for the worldwide church. Please reply with the bold type words. The world belongs to the Lord, the earth and all its people. How good and how lovely it is to live together in unity. Love and faith come together Justice and peace join hands. If the Lord's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Lord, open our lips, 
and our mouth proclaim your praise. Ascribe greatness to our God the Rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. Our first worship song. do we give you. So we offer you with thanksgiving our God-given time, talents, resources and money. We offer them for your service here in Swindon, our old town parish, our Bristol diocese and further afield for your glory's sake. Amen. Please sit down. Overjoyed to welcome uh, children here today for the return of Sunday Club. Our actually a particular task in a moment because uh, fortnight's time we have our uh, Harvest Festival and uh, influence on the Desai School, our poetry project in Kenya. But also beyond that is Christmas time. We've got plans for that. And so those children who are here today and we're going out with Sue, thank you for all you bring to us and God bless you. And uh, your ideas mean a huge amount to us. So uh, thank you for being here today. Now, I should not be here because I was up for the foot and half marathon in my 60th year, but it was cancelled uh, due to COVID. Not people had signed up. So I am here and delighted to be here with you and not running uh, through, uh, through Swindon. But as a family, we are so excited and the clue is in my pocket. Why are we so excited? Well, the clue is that we love tennis. And so in my pocket is a tennis ball. The ball that Emma Rakanu served that ace on this time last week. In America, that's not quite true. But um, <laughs> that lovely quote when she damaged her knee and she said, I'm praying I wouldn't do a double fault. Well, thank God she didn't. So double what she served, a wonderful Ace. And it's an incredible story, and we love tennis. And if you want to talk tennis with us afterwards, uh, then uh, please do. But actually, tennis fans are really into animals. You see, we just love goats. What is the link between goats, children, and tennis? Goats. You think of goats? Do goats hold tennis rackets? Do they serve tennis balls? Well, it's all in the title. Goat is spelt G-O-A-T. 
T. Greatest of all time. And you'll see around the world tennis matches is Federer the GOAT, is Djokovic the GOAT, is Nadal the GOAT. And who knows, one day Abraham Konu might be the GOAT. So I want to ask children, all of us, what does it mean to be a great Christian? And when I read out those words on behalf of the PCC, what does it mean to be part of a great church? I'd love to hear your ideas about that. So we have our inspection, not in Ofsted, teachers here today, but our inspection this Thursday we'll be praying for Jim and Sandy and Nitin. Great Christian and a great church. Actually, my first ever sermon in Oxford was titled, How Can I Be a Great Christian? Not look at me by means. I can be a great Christian. But interestingly, the disciples argued about this. Who is the greatness? And one of the biggest challenges, children at school, on social media, and as for adults, is while it's really good uh, when you write essays, read stories, to be critical, to compare or contrast. What is not helpful if we're all saying, I'm not that, or we're not this. Every single person is unique and special. And wonderfully, as we launch Sunday Club today again, in our Bible reading, Jesus takes a child. I've got to remember, children, these, in these days, children were the lowest of the low. Scruffy and, in fact, way on the edge, out and about. And Jesus says, look at this child and learn from this child because you've got it all wrong, adults. You're arguing, you're discussing. Go back to what it's all about. Remember, when God sent me, he sent a tiny baby dressed in nappies. So much more about that, but we're just really excited to learn from you about goats, the greatest of all time. And it's our prayers for you as you go through the challenges of school, that you learn more about from this community about God's love and God's strength and God's peace. So God bless you, God bless your schools, and may we, in God's strength, be great Christians and a great church, not for our own sake, but for our great God. Let us pray as we sit. Just hear that question, the silence. How can I be a great Christian? At the end of the reading, which uh, Steve will read for us, are these words from James. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. In a world that says what we ought to have or should be, God says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. God, who loves little children, we adore you. We drink in this morning the wonder of your presence, the specialness of our relationship with you. You are far beyond our understanding. Your love is greater than our greatest dreams. Even when the US Open and Maranacanu did last Saturday, we worship you, our Lord and our great God. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. Enjoy your tennis. God bless. And now Sue will uh, go out. And so if you are younger here and like to go to the community centre, please do as uh, we plan uh, for harvest. Uh, God bless your learning. And we'll see you later on in our service. Thank you, Lord, for each child who's here today. And we do pray for Sue and for their learning together. 
And especially pray, Lord, for Harvest Festival in a fortnight's time. The gifts the children bring will be gifts which inspire us to go deeper into you. Amen. As we sit, we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament. Let us turn to the Lord and confess our sins, particularly what we argue about as the disciples argued. Almighty God, in the community of Christ Church and the presence of God's people, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you, cared for your world or respected your people as we should. We own our responsibility and pray for your pardon. Amen. May God forgive us, Christ befriend us, and the Spirit renew and change our lives. Amen. First reading today, Book of James, and listen out for that last word. This should be read by Millie Dunbar. Millie had a slight fall today, so really sorry Millie's not here today. Steve will read this on her behalf. Thank you, Steve. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war with you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our generous God inspires generous living. Our theme today, we'll sing now in this worship song. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. He said, freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Please stand to sing this song. to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum and when he was in the house he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, 
but the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A little bit of pressure standing here today. I spent uh, Monday and Tuesday, as I do uh, most Septembers, at the Festival of Preaching online and learning about preaching people over the world. And uh, it was a wonderfully inspiring time, the challenges of our times. And um, how ultimately what preaching is about is what is God's living word based on his word in the past for people in their challenges and how preaching in every context is unique. So you could say, what is our unique selling point? Or what is uniquely unique to hear online in Old Town Swindon or at Christ Church Old Town Partnership to inspire you in the challenge you face this week? Let's pray as we sit. Thank you, Lord, for all those who pray for us. And your Holy Spirit in this place right now and over our town. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to receive your living word as your gift to us. Praise you for your generosity. Help us, Lord, to understand what generosity looks like in this, our generation. And we pray this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So the disciples were arguing. And interesting, in the Greek, that word is dialogue. And there's nothing wrong with dialogue. Without dialogue, the world uh, wouldn't exist. But actually arguing is less helpful, potentially. Or certainly as we argue, are we listening to one another? Interesting point about listening. We listen to understand or to respond. Think for a moment about the communication you've had this week. To what extent are you listening to understand or to get your next word in? Come what may. And they are arguing about who is the greatness. And I would love over refreshments afterwards to hear your reaction to that. What does it mean to be a great Christian? To be part of a great church following a great Lord? And even those questions, do they challenge us? What are the criteria for greatness? And as you heard, and you can reflect afterwards, the website about our vision, our mission, and our values. How do you feel about that? Do they excite you? Will they inspire our praying and our service? Um, we can't do this without you. And uh, you see the picture of the PCC and... Uh, you know, our church wardens, Jim and Nitin. And uh, clearly, you know, there's lots of tasks, lots of governance, lots of um, things to do. But thank you for all of your support, which I want to reiterate, and that your prayers, your inspiration, your encouragement, and your financial giving, and giving in kind. Those of you new, apologise one cent for this, but not too much apology. Every September, being professional spiritual, beginning of a new school year in our learning together. We ask people to reflect on their Christian giving. Are they able to increase their giving in the line with inflation, our uh, parish giving scheme? And uh, that enables then for those pledges, the PCC, to make a budget in October for our service and mission. And just to give an idea, uh, we give a parish share pledge to that, so Bristol for £110,000. They're not far short of £9,000 a month because we're passionately believing that we're connected with the wider church, for example, in Parks and Walcott or Penn Hill. And you may well be aware, you have 10 years life less expectancy living in Pale Hill or uh, Parks than you do in Old Town. But ultimately, uh, what can I say to inspire us today? Well, I just want to reiterate that wonderful verse said to the children, we're all children of God, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Please do find some quiet spaces, begin to pray 
this would be a thin place. Iona is a wonderful place, as is Teze or Liabi or Bristol Cathedral. But Swindon can be a thin place. People experience the living God. We've seen that happening in various ways this week. But for today, these disciples were bickering. And Jesus speaks to them through the child. And the child was the outcast put on one slide. And Jesus was saying to the disciples, whoever wants to be great must be the least in one sense, to be the servant or the slave. Now we find those words difficult in our present uh, language, but in terms of the culture of Jesus' time, slaves were common and accepted as normal. Furthermore, slaves were universal and no one particular race was more likely than any other to be enslaved. So quite simply, friends, a slave was someone who belonged to a master, whose role was to reflect the greatness of his owner in all that she or he did or said. So by being part of this community, by being baptised, as a Christian, we are an ambassador for Christ on a Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Friday evening. Ambassador to Christ in how we run our bank accounts. We have a bank account in where we shop and how we handle our computers, what we Google, what our priorities are. And so September could be a time for us to reflect on where are we going? Is it clear that if we're baptised, confirm we belong to Jesus Christ and we're his ambassador? For Jesus, we learn that greatness is not about climbing to the top of the pile. For Jesus, greatness exists in the rightness of our relationships, our character, our sacrificial nature, our generosity of spirit, Starting the growing relationship, foundation, our relationship with the living God. And so with the inspection on Thursday, if we're not helping you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, then please do let us know, I'll write the Archdeacon or the Bishop, so we can get our act together. Because in all the practice of PCC, it's that we help you to draw near with God as he draws near with us. And so in conversation, in our small groups, in guided reading, in retreat, or it might be, in opportunity for service, to develop your Christian gifts, and really exciting to see children here today and their passion to learn more and to offer contributions, for example, to all-age worship at harvest time. We're about spiritual growth. And so today... In a moment, we'll have Holy Communion. In the present moment, we bring communion to you where you are. You'll see at the front, the money is on the baptism font. First time I've ever been there. It's partly because we have a small communion table today. You can see across before that. But I think that's really special. We are linked to the church in Uganda. And when it comes to the offertory, offertory is a time of hilarity, like going to a comedy evening or to a film. People are laughing, hilarity, making their offering. All things come from you, of your own do we give you. And so today, you'll see in a moment as I take off the uh, the communion, um, prepare uh, for the communion service, uh, you'll see some of your gifts, others have given by standing orders in other sort of ways. But to remind me that uh, we cannot do this work without resources, that's people, and that is money. But it's wonderful how we're learning that uh, God takes what seems very small and transforms it and multiplies it. And so in the quietness, as you look at that, what it means for you to draw near with God. Before communion, we'll sing probably uh, my favourite uh, worship song, It's the one that we sang actually in Oxford when I preached that first sermon. 
And it always reminds me that uh, Christian life is work in progress. We do this in community. And so we love to talk with you about your experiences and how we can go forward together to be the greatest we can be, not for the sake of the vicar or the PCC or for the bishop or the archdeacon, but for God's glory. So it matters to me, it matters to you, that God's name is respected, is honoured in Old Town Swindon. It matters to me that every single person who drives past here, walks, runs, cycles past there, knows how much God loves them, God's with them, and God can help them. Yes, we've got a long way to go, but we have a history, people who pray for us, communion of saints. I often said here that one of the great running illustrations we had run today, half marathon, I'd been somewhere back on the field, but people are out there cheering us on. And the park run, yes, Lydiard Park, people run for the first time, and the last one gets the same cheer as the first one does. And so be aware, friends, as you make your pledges, you consider whether this community is enabling you to grow in the Christian faith, how to be partners in the gospel. In summary, the chorus will sing before communion. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Please help us to bring our whole lives as a daily offering this week, this month, this year of worship to you, our servant king, who teaches us what it means to be great. Please stand. And so with a developing vision, mission and resource, we're part of God's worldwide church. That our words and our actions must coalesce. My dear mother's phrase, we're growing up, the test of your faith is the lives you lead, not the words you say. That being said, please reply to the following questions. Friends, do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of God's worldwide church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Please sit to pray as Steve leads us in our intercessions for God's work. First, I apologize for keeping my, my, what do you call it again? I forget what it is. My mask on. I'm sure even James was not pleased. Let us pray. When I say 
Lord, in your mercy, say, hear our prayer. God of all, we gather together to reflect on your presence and bring you our prayers. Be among us and within us. Be also with people who join with this worship online, wherever they are. Pour your blessings on our partnership of churches here in Old Town. We pray for all those who have recently joined the church through baptism. Be with and guide our PCC members as they prepare for their meeting on the 27th of September. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of mercy, we pray for our nation. Bless our Queen and all members of the royal family. Give them strength and guide them through the problems they have been facing. We pray for the Prime Minister and all of those who are going to serve in the newly formed cabinet. Let your guidance be with them as they search for solutions to various problems facing the nation. We are also thankful, dear Lord, for all the work accomplished by those who have recently left the cabinet. We pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father of all, you pour your blessings on all refugees who are being forced to leave their countries. We pray especially for those who have joined our own community here in Old Town, that they will feel welcome. We pray for Afghanistan that their situation might settle. We congratulate Neil and Nicola Palframan on their marriage here on Friday. Bless them all their life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We ask for your help with bringing together all the people whom you created. We pray for an end to conflicts which cause the death of innocent, young, and old. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for supporting carers, wherever they serve. Continue to bless their work with your healing and healing those whom they care for, those who are suffering in body and in spirit. We pray for this especially on behalf of Sylvia Cameron, Jack Cameron, Pam Bridgman, John Stevenet, John Day, Gordon Hurd, and others who need your healing. Rambo. Help people whose lives are affected or threatened by COVID in our community across the whole nation and all around the world. Bless those living with long-term medical conditions or mental health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The God of mercy, grant a peaceful rest to those who have recently passed away. We pray for Miles Earl, who died recently. Console and bless the family 
and friends of miles. We pray also for others who have lost loved ones and those who are mourning for them. Let's say the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Friends, please stand. There is a possible danger. You could hear what I said in terms of oughts and shoulds. It is absolutely true that God wants us to be wholehearted. But as we stand now, I came across these words this week, and before I say the piece, I hope this will remind you that what we are offering today is a vision of what the church can be like. You are our generous God. Lord, please forgive me. Forgive us. We get it wrong. Empower me. Empower us. And teach me and us our rightful place in you. We stand now here in Christ Church, maybe also at home, humbly in your presence, forgiven, empowered, acknowledging that you are the greatest in your great name, we pray. And that spirit, friends, we are the body of Christ. In one school, baptised into one body, let's then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Going to sing now the hymn, King of Kings, Majesty. Uh, you know, I did say that uh, we'd be having a surfing hymn. That's the last hymn. But this hymn takes up that word in James, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Allow this him to prepare you to receive communion or a blessing this morning. King of kings, majesty, our great God. silence so the words that you've sung
Lord, teach us what it means to be great in your service. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. O God of mystery and promise, you invite us to discover you in the intimate places of ourselves and our lives. You invite us to discover you within the complexities of our humanity. You call us beyond ourselves, the place of imagination, in the unending cycles of day and night, seasons of life and death. With all creation, we join in the song of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you that in Jesus you make known to us the wonder and richness of our humanity. We give thanks for his life-giving love, for his healing touch, for his vulnerability and for his gentleness. Before he gave up his life, Jesus shared his humanity as a child, his flesh and blood with his friends. As we do now what Jesus once did, let your spirit move among us here in Swindon to settle on this bread and this wine. They may become for us the body and blood of Christ. Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. So too, after they had eaten, Jesus took wine, gave thanks for it and said, This is my blood poured out in love for you. Do this to remember me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come now, Spirit of God, and as we eat and drink these bodily things, make us one body, food for the world, one blood to be poured out for the life of all. Touch us with your gentle creativity and fire us with longing for the new age of justice and peace. We ask this through Jesus, who gave his body, that we might be one, and his blood, that we might find new life. Amen. So we hold the silence, remembering how much this meal cost our Lord Jesus Christ. How he longed to pour his spirit, his healing, his compassion, his vision into our hearts, our minds and our souls. If only we'll be open to receive and be wholehearted in our response. Lord, teach me. Lord, teach us to pray. All we need in life is in the Lord's Prayer. And so, treasuring each phrase, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Mark's gospel, thank God, is a gospel all about human mistakes. So I've got it wrong time and time again, which is always encouraging to me when I read it and preach from it. With the disciples, we pray for God's mercy. In our arguments, we focus on what Jesus wants our priorities to be. So we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of our Lord. It's made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, you who have little. Come, because it's the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want to know him should meet him here. Please stand. Again, welcome those Christ Church here for the first time. We have communion in these times. At the moment, in one kind, more about that in a few moments' time. For today, in one kind. And so, if you could have your hands open, and I will bring communion to you where you are. If you quietly say, Amen, that would be appreciated. I will receive the wine on our behalf. If you want to receive a simple prayer blessing, have your hands down. So we know your intention. If you want gluten-free wafers, then Steve will bring those to those who need them. When you receive communion, please sit down. And the worship song will be singing, Jesus, name of all names, beautiful Saviour, glorious Lord. This will be sung through four or five times. And allow these words, maybe to be a refrain you take with you this week, as to what it means to be great in Jesus' service. Friends, the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Friends, the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.
and the part of the service we enter now. And you'll see before the communion time, for the first time, symbols of money on the font here. And we go out in a moment uh, to our homes, what it means to serve Jesus Christ, the whole of our worship. This prayer came to me as a gift from Daphne. I knew it for and beautiful words here. And it inspired my preparation this week. And again, we'll make this available for you. O oh Christ, the master carpenter, you at the last through wood and nails crafted our whole salvation. Wield well your tools in the workshop of your world so that we who come rough-hewn to your bench may here be fashioned to a true beauty of your hand. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And our response is to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Amen. And now may the Spirit of God, who brooded over the waters and brought order out of chaos, Find a home in our hearts and our homes and settle our minds as we continue today and that tomorrow and this wake we may wake and live to God's glory. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I publish a band to marriage between Christian James Tanza Dawson and Elizabeth Mary Louise Noble, both of this parish, for the third time of asking. And in the reason, law, this couple may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Gracious God, we pray for Christian and Elizabeth, and indeed for all the couples we've worked with this year for their marriages. Thank you for them, all they've taught us, privilege to share with them in their marriage plans. And we pray for their ongoing spiritual growth. Their marriage will be an offering of service in our community. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. We want to understand, uh, there have been many tears over the last a year with our engaged couples because of the challenges of coronavirus. It's been great to celebrate, as we did uh, on Friday. But actually today, if you can stay afterwards for refreshments, uh, Katie and Rob, uh, Rob, our son, Nicola and I, have got their wedding cake, and you want to see some photographs from their wedding, and has a wedding cake, please do, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, in the community centre. It's been really great to have conversations about the theme of the service, opportunity then to meet PC members uh, after our service. And thank you, Katie and Rob sharing your celebrations with us. Tonight, a change of mood, choral evensong here at half past six. A beautiful service, commend that to you and for those who will come. Mentioned about our small groups, and particularly the Church of England, Bristol Diocese, living in love and faith. And so I'd encourage you to see the magazine on the website, to talk to us about that, the five-week course so we come with an openness to learn more from God's word for one another about relationships and the possible way forward. Just a word about the next couple of weeks. Uh, so next Sunday is a mission gift day. All of our giving next week will go to what's for the Willows, uh, the counselling service across the way, and Tanya will be coming to preach uh, next uh, Sunday. But also Andrew Yoel, our PC treasurer, which I say more practically about our PC budgeting uh, for your prayers and possible action. And in a fortnight's time, 
Uh, we're delighted to have the emphasis on Desai, our partnership project, as our harvest offering will go to supporting that and that work. And Mike Walsh, head teacher at Goddard, who's been long-standing linked with that, uh, will be uh, our guest preacher. We're living with COVID, and I know many of you have spoken to me about communion and wine. And so our COVID group will look on Tuesday afternoon about the possibility of having the wine by intinction. And uh, talk about this if you want to ask. What I'd be interested to know would be we could the possibility of coming forward, we used to do here, walking forward to receive the wafer, and then you would tincture if you want to in the wine, or doing it in the pew. There would always be opportunity, if it was the first one, to also have communion in the pew for those who can't walk down here. It would be very helpful to us to know how that would feel to you. We're wanting to deepen our worship, our sense of what it means to stand firm in Jesus Christ. And so safety is paramount, but it also in terms of our singing, how you feel about the option of singing without your face covering on. Clearly, again, absolutely fine people to keep their face covering on, as Steve did today for the prayers. But to that sense, how we can deepen our worship in the weeks that lie ahead. Keep people safe here, but at the same time, go deeper into Christ. And so we come now to our last time. You heard the introduction for it. Again, that chorus, this is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Please stand to sing this and then take this into our lives this week. Thank you. 
well sung. Before the final blessing, I love intergenerational ministry. And today, uh, Janet uh, gave Toby a gift of cards. And these cards are entitled Heroes on a Mission. That is all of you, Heroes on a Mission. And this does come from Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, and Marvel via Sainsbury's. But I think it's a wonderful illustration of God using that advertising to remind you as you guys. Give this back now to you, Toby, this crucial card that we are heroes on a mission. And so, dear friends, heroes on a mission. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honour everyone. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of his Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you upon God's world, our country, our county, our town, our partnership, all those whom we love, pray for, serve and remember today, this week, and always. Amen. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.